Uh, maybe we could start by just, you know, a few minutes, if you could just go around the room, uh, you know, just if you could talk a little bit about yourself, not just about the role that you're playing, but something that, uh, you know, inspires you with this topic of, you know, inclusion of women, right? So effectively, the theme is how women leaders can inspire inclusion within our industry. And I think since all of us are part of the financial services space, maybe within the vertical that you're focused on, you know, what, what are some of the points that come to your mind on this. So maybe I'll just go randomly around on what I can see on the screen. So Natasha, if I could start with you, I can just see you up there right on, first on the screen. So maybe a bit about yourself and what do you think about this topic? So uh, I'm Natasha. I've been in the financial services industry for about 23 years. And over these 23 years, things have evolved. If you're a woman investor, you would probably be sitting alone and be the only woman over there in a, in a room full of uh, men. But today, things have changed quite significantly, both you know on the uh, research side of it or on the fund management side of it or even in the overall financial services space, uh, we do see a lot more women leaders. Of course, a lot more, many are still required. But uh, yes, it's been an interesting journey for, for 23 years. We've seen a lot of changes happening, both in terms of regulatory changes, as well as in terms of the overall mindset of people. And uh, it has been exciting and we look forward to many more coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. We'll come back to you. Uh, Shalini, if I can come to you, uh, you know, how are you seeing this whole aspect of women leaders in the space that you're operating in? Uh, thank you so much, Dilip, for having me here in this panel. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, if I would, uh, if I have to explain about, you know, what my experience has been. Uh, so I have been into the BFSI space for over two decades now. So it's largely, you know, retail lending. It's, uh, you know, you call any kind of retail loans, whether it is uh, car loans, whether it's property loans, whether it is unsecured loans, or SME business loans. So I have basically covered the, covered the entire gamut of the entire retail risk management, so to say, which includes formulation of policies, underwriting, uh, analytics, debt collections, fraud control, you know, the entire piece of risk management. So, uh, you know, when I started my journey, um, I started as, you know, a fresher uh, after completing my education, which is, uh, you know, I did my chartered accountancy and cost accountancy. And, you know, starting from there itself, we, we ha I have seen very few women in each of our, you know, uh, you know, uh, the various milestones which I have achieved so far, mm -hmm. wherever I went, we started with very, very few women. So whether I'm doing, uh, you know, whether I'm writing examinations for my chartered accountancy or cost accountancy, you could actually find a handful of women in the entire examination center. Having said this, uh, the entire journey, if I look back and if I see what we are today, I have seen uh, you know, there has been significant increase in the number of women in many of these areas, uh, at least, I mean, not, not only in the BF, BFSI space, but I mean, you just name any industry. Now you see women, there may be very few of them, but you see some representation there. So that's something which I am seeing. Um, although the numbers are small, if you just look at the overall perspective, um, so, you know, if you look at the industry uh, in the BFSI space, not many, not more than, you know, 20, 21% of the entire um, workforce is, is women in most of the uh, players across BFSI. But at GC, we have been able to get touch about 27% of diversity. So there is a lot of work which is happening. There is a, a continuous, you know, a focus on this and, and we are seeing results. Uh, because everybody is conscious about uh, improving the diversity ratio in every organization. And I can see a lot of conscious efforts are being made in this direction. And and uh, the numbers are also improving. Um, and, and and if I were to say, are we already, already there? No, we are not. There's still a lot of work which needs to be done. But what I'm really happy about is that all organizations are taking steps 
in this direction in a very focused manner. And so are we at Godrej Capital. So, so that's what my, uh, you know, journey has been and my experience has been in the, the live. Thank you, Shalini. We'll come back and talk about some of these conscious efforts that you mentioned. Yeah. Siti, if I can come to you, uh, what are your thoughts? You're working in the product marketing space, you know, uh, fintech and tech in general, uh, it all centers around product, right? How are you seeing, uh, you know, women leaders in, in this part of product thinking, but also within fintech or even at a larger level, right? How do you see women product leaders evolving? Sure, 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 Dilip. Actually, when you talk, you know, when you talk about in, inclusive uh, inclusion of women, right, in business or in any other sectors, I actually have had a very roller coaster uh, ride in terms of what my thoughts have been on that. Right, I started uh, taking a step back. I started my journey in a girls' school where you know you, I never had a comparative in my mind, and then I decided the you know that I want to go to a premier institute of the country. I decided the IIT bug hit me. And then when I joined the IIT, I was surprised that I was, you know, one of three women in, in a classroom of 120 men, right? So um, I suddenly realized that, oh, things are not what I thought they were. But then I also got the confidence being in the premier institution of the country that you can be whoever you want to be, right? Which was which was a very empowering feeling um, and which I realized was something that, uh, you know, whether you are in fintech or in any sec uh, sector, you can always be whoever you want to be. Uh, you need not be worried about the fact that there is a gender gap, etc. Right? Then I went on and did my management degree in London, where again the whole world changed for me because I saw that there were e there was equal participation of women leaders. Right? We had just as many women in in the classroom as men. And then I thought maybe it was just in tech, maybe in business that's not the case. But then I move on, and when I start my entrepreneurial journey, I got walk into a room full of uh, founders or you know venture capitalists. And again, I'm alone, right? So it's been a roller coaster, but I also realized that it is, uh, you know, it is just a matter of time. Everybody is moving uh, towards a point of um, uh, equity, right? Um, in, in all industries, all, you know, functions are at different stages, but it is all getting there. And a product again, and product and product marketing is a similar, I think, uh, function, right? Where uh, maybe 10 years ago, you would hardly see uh, women being in, involved in those functions because, uh, uh, you know, the, the number of people who are training to be in these functions were less, but now with more and more women, uh, you know, uh, joining premier institutions in management in engineering and technology, right? I see that changing right in front of my eyes. Thank you, Aditi. In fact, we'll come back to this point on training. Maybe it's part of the conscious effort or the direction that perhaps we need to take. Uh, right. So I could come to you. Uh, your thoughts, uh, so I'm in fact being a founding member of, of Rupi Card and you know actually therefore being at the very start of creating uh, an an organization. Samia, so, yeah, how how would you respond to Aditi's comment around you know walking into a room of founders and finding very less women? Of course, you would be one of them in the room. But what's what have you observed? Uh, thanks, thanks, Dilip, for having me for creating this panel and for uh, bringing up this question very pertinent today, especially to women across industries, right, whether fintech or BFSI or other industries. And, um, uh, you know, before I joined Rupee Card, I have been a banker and uh, I've been an entrepreneur before this as well myself. So, uh, you know, uh, diverse uh, experiences across different industries, but something that has been a constant is being in the minority when you come to uh, when it comes to gender right um i remember uh, just before rupee card when i was running my own company and uh, going to investor meets going to networking events and you know uh, uh, just like other other panelists experiences i i had a similar experience where you would be one of the few um, uh, you know women out there um uh, but uh, i've i've seen this uh, in my journey uh, you know, the, the equity seems to be moving up. The number of women coming into the workforce, at least uh, in my own experience, it seems to be uh, moving up and, um, uh, you know, hope to see this uh, growing across all, all segments. And we know from industry uh, data uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the number of women entrepreneurs now coming in, now applying for financial inclusion, now applying for credit enablement. Uh, some of these numbers are fairly encouraging to us 
uh, at Rupi card and uh, you know otherwise uh, to see women uh, coming up and and taking these steps towards uh, you know inclusion in all formats um, uh, not just financial inclusion so it's um, it's it's been very encouraging and uh, it's never really deterred me to be um, you know part of uh, the lesser number of women so to say it's somehow it's it's never um, and now that I think of it specifically, it comes to mind. But uh, I've been fortunate enough uh, not to have faced any kind of discrimination basis uh, gender. Um, uh, would it have been great to have more uh, women participants wherever I went, whether it was my education, whether it was my first job? Uh, maybe, yes. Um, somehow I've, I've never had this worry about, uh, you know, where I come from or what gender I belong to. Uh, but yes, uh, practically speaking, on ground, uh, I started my career in uh, in a bank, in a sales role, uh, in retail sales, right? So I my one of my first assignments was to manage uh, hundreds of men uh, of all ages and and uh, from diverse segments. So uh, it was a learning. It's it's been a great journey, and I've seen that number steadily move up slowly, but steadily move up. Um, whether it's my entrepreneurial journey, whether it's my, uh, uh, you know, uh, corporate job role and now here as a founding member, uh, we are very focused on getting uh, the right kind of talent, irrespective of gender. But if we do get women on board, there's a lot of uh, focus on, on making sure that we are flexible enough to, um, uh, to, to accommodate everybody's needs and to make sure that women who are joining the work, workforce do not uh, kind of drop out, I think. Um, and maybe we will talk about that more as we progress into this session. Uh, but th these are, uh, you know, some thoughts that come to mind. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Samia. And maybe I round it off with you, Usha. Uh, you know, you're part of the host family, but... <laughs> with us your experience has been a rich experience you know over the years uh, just give yeah. us your thoughts thank you so much uh, Dilip and it's indeed a pleasure to see all the uh, you know strong uh, women leaders here in this panel it's a great initiative I think yeah my uh, journey has been a very long and I would say exciting uh, one I wouldn't have it any other way I joined very young and, uh, you know, I come with more than three decades of experience in the financial sector, uh, financial services, specifically more into banking. So, I mean, you name the type of banks, uh, I've been there and done that. So whether it's public sector, private sector, whether it's a foreign bank with a stint at Amsterdam or whether it's payments bank or small finance banks, I think the next probably... Um, you know, they have to create a new set of banks <laughs> for us to, uh, you know, think of uh, being a part of it. So I think it's been an amazing journey. And uh, my observations, uh, Dilip, um, uh, you know, have been very varied uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the diversity inclusion. So, you know, I did a stint at Bihar where I was probably the only woman uh, uh, working in the entire state of Bihar. And that was a very long ago. Uh, whereas in the South, um, you know, probably because of the uh, strength and very, very strong, um, I would say, um, uh, you know, um, feminine domination in the South, it's been very common uh, to see women working here. Bombay has been a very mixed bag and I've never seen, uh, you know, any kind of uh, difference in numbers or in terms of uh, differences um, in men and women working. Everyone, <laughs> we used to be on our own and uh, there was a, it was a mixed bag. So I think it's also geography. Within India, we have so many countries, so many parts, so many states. So it's been geography. Of course, when I, uh, you know, did my stint at Amsterdam, uh, there we could see uh, more of diversity and uh, and diversity, not just gender diversity. We had multiple aspects of diversity, which, uh, you know, the uh, foreign banks encouraged, um, uh, you know, on, I would say, on very consciously, they would encourage that. And um, I think coming to the current, um, you know, um, uh, part of the journey in Spice Money, it's been uh, nothing short of, uh, I would say, exciting uh, and uh, it's uh, it's been uh, 
hugely satisfying because uh, not just as a woman leader, um, uh, you know, uh, part of the leadership group, it's also been uh, very enlightening to see how we in Spice Money are able to actually empower women uh, in deep rural. So that uh, to me has been very, very satisfying. Um, uh, you know, uh, I would say that it's, it's, it's a crowning jewel in the journey so far that we are able to uh, empower so many women. And as far as, um, you know, my experience has been concerned in uh, wherever I have worked, I do think that there is a probably a little more of work that we would need to put in consciously, um, you know, to uh, kind of ensure that uh, um, there is uh, no bias in the mind that because we are women, we are not able to do this or that. So um, it's, it's always been, uh, you know, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder with all colleagues, irrespective of their gender. And um, um, I think uh, I would say that I've been blessed to be at the right place, right time with the right mentors. Mm, and uh, I mean, uh, absolutely, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, that's that's what I would say, Dilip. Thank you, Usha. So maybe let's uh, dive straight into what needs to be done here to promote further inclusion, right? I think, uh, you know, Shalini, you spoke about Lots of conscious efforts happening. How at Godrich Capital, you are at 27% you know, diversity versus 20, 21% for the industry. Um, I think, Aditi, you spoke about training, right, as something that needs to be looked at. How you saw few at IIT, more in business. And therefore, it's like, what are the girls kind of getting into in terms of education and where it's going? And then I think, uh, uh, you know, Soumya, you said that, you know, equity seems to be moving up. So basically, you're, you're seeing more and more of it happen uh, at, at, uh, in your experience. And then, Natasha, you also spoke about the fact that on the research side and the fund management side, you are seeing more women leaders coming in. So so just to start off with, you know, are you seeing, because I, as I hear a conversation across BFSI for sure, uh, but even across industries, I think gender inclusion, diversity is something that everyone's talking about, right? So when you look for, you know, getting someone on the job, right? Do you get enough applications coming from women, you know, from your perspective? What's been your experience? You want to hire for a position, right? If you receive 10 applications for that position, one is consciously saying, I look for if, if there's a man and a woman applying, maybe given everything equal, I'll take the woman on board. But does it work that way? Or, you know, within your own company experience, you know, out of 10 applications, how many do you see for, you know, women applying for jobs? So, one is this aspect of training. I would just imagine at an overall level when uh, Shalini, you spoke about 20, 21% of women in BFSI. Would you say that BFSI is at a forefront of having more women in the industry, Shalini, compared to other industries or not? So, uh, so I think a lot of work is happening across industries. BFSI, traditionally, the numbers have been pretty low. Uh, so I can see in this space, a lot of work has been done. And also, if you, you know, uh, I'm sure you'll be aware of the various uh, push which has been done from a lot of statutory uh, authorities also, whether it is Companies Act saying that, you know, uh, for certain companies meeting certain, uh, 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 you know, for certain categories of companies, you need to ensure that you have at least one, uh, one women director in the entire board. So it's coming from there. And uh, so while still, I would say women leaders number is still very small. We still do not have too many women at the leadership roles. But if you look at industry, so if I come back to the BFSI industry, uh, you know, there are, uh, there are a number of functions within this industry. So there is sales, there is product, there are backend operations, there is finance, there is technology. So if you look at the diversity, it varies from these function to function. Women in sales, you know, it used to be very, very small number in, in uh, you know, maybe uh, 10, 12 years back. But now what we are seeing is we are getting a lot of applications, a lot of women who are interested in a sales role, which is a front end role, right? Which requires a lot of traveling, meeting clients. So we are seeing a lot of, uh, you know, applications there. Finance traditionally also has been, um, in terms of diversity, it has been pretty, uh, you know, lopsided. But we are seeing now women in functions in treasury, finance, technology. Now you see so many women CTOs. Earlier, 
technology was one area where you would not see too many women. Here also, I can see, you know, a lot of people. And for, for me, for my company at Godrej Capital, there is a CTO is a, is a lady. CHRO, HR function has been dominated by women. And, you know, where you see a lot of people there across industry, I would say. But now, whether it is sales, whether it is finance, whether it is risk management, I think all across, there has been a lot of improvement. Certain areas are still governed, still more dominated by, by uh, you know, by mail, which is, you know, whether it is debt collections, um, uh, you know, when, when you are valuing collateral, because in our industry, in retail finance, you deal with mortgage loans. So where you have to get the valuations of, of properties done. So there you do not find too many women. So again, so what I'm trying to say is industry to industry, there is a large, you know, difference. Overall, BFSI, if you compare BFSI with, for example, a fintech or, you know, or, or an IT industry, uh, I think the, the uh, you know, the, the gender diversity ratios are different. Uh, again, if you say an FMCG industry, again, I think there you may have more women, but uh, across industry, if you are to compare, uh, the differences are there. Within BFSI is what I was trying to explain it to you that BFSI used to be a small uh, percentage in terms of diversity. Women diversity, diversity used to be very small. Now it has gone up. And there is what I am trying to tell you that, you know, GC, Godrej Capital, we are trying to work to improve this ratio as much as possible. Uh, thank you, Shalini. In fact, yeah. you know, as we are discussing, if anyone wants to add anything, please do raise your hand digitally or otherwise. But I, I think really, Shani, what you're touching upon is that there could be some horizontal functions like HR, customer care and all where across industries, you're seeing more women, you know, occupy yeah. uh, positions. But, you know, interestingly saying even in technology, uh, sales front end, you're seeing more women come up because eventually if more women join the workforce, then there's a good chance that more women leaders will emerge as well, right? Because Absolutely. the number of women joining the workforce is what needs to grow. And I think that really brings back to the question of how does how do we get more women to join the workforce? So one, you're basically talking about statutory, right? Where you say, okay, it starts at the top. You should have a woman director on the board. But that also just one, right? So normally I've seen how companies think about it. Oh, I have a board of 10. I have to have one woman, right? It's yeah. not about, you know, I have to have five women out of 10, right? Who could be women, right? Yeah. So it's, it's like more statutory rather than what it needs to be, right? Kind of a thing. But it's a great start because we have to start somewhere. But I think... The idea is how do we get more women to join? What I'm hearing from you, Shalini, is you're seeing it across functions and you're saying in BFSI or FinTech, it's already happening. Samia, can I maybe talk, ask you, right, as a founding member of the team, what has been your experience as you've tried to build the team at Rupee Card, right? Have you seen more applications coming from women? Have you actively seen more women kind of want to join your journey at Rupee Card? Um. Dilip, it's been a, a mixed experience so far. And uh, I think as, as recruiters uh, at any company um, or as leaders at any company, the first thing you look for is merit. And uh, of course, there is no gender discrimination at that stage. But do we get enough applications? I would say uh, the reality on field today is that the number of applications coming in from women is relatively smaller and the majority still goes to the men. It also is a function of role. Uh, you know, what Shalini was touching upon earlier, uh, we do see fewer applications from women in the technical space and more so in the uh, in the marketing or, you know, more horizontal functions. Uh, it could be uh, a function of uh, what, what women have chosen as career paths for themselves or the qualifications that they come with. Are uh, they choosing more technical roles or not? I mean, that needs to be evaluated to see why there is possibly a difference uh, in, in numbers there. Um, having said that, uh, you know, I was talking about this earlier. I think uh, the first step is, of course, what you mentioned, which is getting women to join the workforce and then also to retain them. And I'm borrowing uh, from my own journey, right? This is a function of the role that you are doing. This is also a function of your life stage um, for women, especially, right? Uh, whether we like it or not, um, uh, in, in a woman's career, in a woman's life stage, um, uh, you know, uh, th there are major changes that she goes through and that does impact careers. 
um, by default, I think we still see women today becoming the primary caregivers for their families, right? Um, uh, there's a lot of social conditioning and, and various other factors involved, of course. But it's also got to do with basic biology. And it's something that we can't, uh, you know, mince words about. And I've seen that happen uh, to me. And there was a time in my career where I I chose to prioritize my kids where I chose to prioritize myself, of course, right? Because there was just too much happening and I, and I wanted to do something uh, different and do it differently than having a race against time every day. So um, coming back to the, the question that you asked, what can we do to foster more women joining and to continue to have them in the workforce? I think those are the questions that are interlinked and very important to discuss uh in my in my opinion and from my personal and professional experience i feel uh, a sharing journeys sharing our own journeys who've crossed uh, some of that time and some of that path and emerged on the other side right can we share our journeys and um, uh, get more women to believe that there's uh, there's a way forward and lead them along the way uh, this is something i strongly believe in and the other is uh, I feel passionate passionately about is is uh, having more flexibility at workplaces, right? Workplaces have typically been dominated by uh, uh, by men, and um, uh, you know the cultures often are therefore the, the, the that emerge are therefore basis how uh, a man sees the world or a man sees the workplace. So I think we know need more voices from women on the challenges that they face and the solutions that could be brought in. Would we be, uh, you know, if I had to talk very specifically about what could be done, a few points come to mind. Could we be more flexible with our timings, with our locations, right? Especially uh, when women are going through transitioning life stages. At that time, as a workplace employer, how is it that we can facilitate um, uh, flexibility in our culture and in our workplaces and make sure that um, uh, that you know that they continue to work and they don't have to be set and and uh, fixed in the in the stereotypical box uh, i think these are two points that i would like to bring forth here no it's very interesting uh, Samia, that you had this point of flexibility in fact let me ask you know if any of you would like to respond you know now that post covid we've moved into this kind of hybrid working environment where you know, I think most companies continue to be hybrid if not fully at office, right? Has that helped a uh, woman in general, like to be able to, you know, work from home or work in a hybrid manner? Have you seen that in your company, anyone? Do you know, do you think it has helped the hybrid work environment for women? Yeah, I can take that. Dilip. So I, I do think, uh, you know, of course, I think it's helpful for both men and women in many ways because like flexibility for a family unit, it's important even for men, but especially for women, let's say, who have young kids, right? Where, uh, of course, COVID itself was a difficult time for a lot of women. While they were working completely from home, they uh, often did not have options of childcare, etc. right? So that was tough. But the hybrid mode, definitely, you know, we've seen a difference, right? We've seen women, uh, um, you know, feel a lot more um, uh, comfortable overall because they know that they have the flexibility that one or two days in a week, if they need to work from home, need to manage certain things at home, they have that ability, right? So I do think net-net, it has been um, a positive impact for women. I think it's a positive impact for the family unit overall. Mm. No, I think, Dilip, um, uh, you know, I would also like to add that, uh, uh, you know, this hybrid uh, working uh, has definitely, uh, I would say, emboldened uh, women to take up, uh, you know, new challenges which otherwise would have been out of their reach because of the, uh, you know, certain uh, roles which they definitely need to pay, uh, play. I mean, in, uh, it's, it's a part of life and, uh, um, you know, certain roles uh, that you need to play on the home front. I think um, those have not become, I would say, um, impediment in any manner and the hybrid uh, work style has uh, broadened their horizon, I would say. It has really... Uh, you know, given a lot of freedom for women to aim for much more. Yeah, yeah. I think the other point that comes to my mind is just in terms of consumers, right? Uh, you know, women as consumers, right? We are all operating in the financial services space. 
Swami, as you think about credit card products, as any of us, Shalini, you think about lending to MSMEs and you think about lending to women who are running small uh, enterprises, right? Uh, is there an aspect of companies beginning to think of women as consumers, uh, which is beginning to uh, play a role in this aspect of having more women on board, thinking around, you know, how to build for women as consumers? Does it matter? Yeah, so I Perhaps think I can take that. I think on the banking side of it, uh, women have been treated as a, you know, a unique set of consumers and especially at you know, Yes Bank and even at Yes Securities. We have been designing products because at the end of the day, we realize that women play a very significant role when it comes to the actual financial planning for the uh, household. In fact, I think Natasha is facing some connectivity. Natasha, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Can you hear me? Sorry. So, a little bit of connectivity issue, but please go on. Yeah, you can switch off the camera. Please go on. I think that helps. Yeah. So I think uh, as far as the women in the banking uh, sector are concerned, we have seen products helping out in terms of, uh, you know, overall financial planning, financial wellness uh, for the women as a consumer, especially design products. Because uh, what we've realized over here is that uh, women are ultimately the one of the best financial planners and, you know, budget allocators for the family. And if we educate them on the need for financial planning as well as design products, which uh, they can invest in, they can understand, then we found that, uh, you know, overall inclusion or overall product designing really supports us as far as the entire women uh, community is concerned. And that in itself has helped in building inroads even with the men folk. It's not just unique to women. So the moment you get the women of a household excited about a particular uh, financial plan or about an investment opportunity, you do see a lot more participation coming in and more often uh, than not a lot more conversion coming in uh, if you involve from that perspective. So that is something that we have realized that we that's something that we've been working on. Uh, Shalini, your thoughts? Yeah. So, uh, you know, if I look at some of the data points in terms of women borrowers, uh, we see that that proportion is gradually increasing. So, you know, earlier it, it used to be some 6 to 7% of women as borrowers. Now we can see the numbers in double digits. So there has been an improvement. More and more women are uh, coming into the MSME space. And the other data point which we find from, you know, looking at the bureau data, credit bureau data is uh, the performance of the, you know, loans taken by women entrepreneurs or women borrowers is far superior as compared to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the other borrowers. So there is a significant um uh, you know, in terms of the quality, in terms of performance uh, of the loan behavior is significantly better. And we see the numbers going up. And, you know, if you look at the microfinance industry, where uh, there are loans specifically designed for, uh, you know, self-help groups, the SHG, where you give loans to, uh, you know, group of women, you know, when you go into the rural areas, these are a group of women who are starting some, you know, small scale industry and they borrow together. They borrow, borrow collectively. And, uh, you know, again, the quality of the performance is far superior. I mean, you find 99% of collection efficiency uh, in those loans. So, so uh, it is improving. And if you go down, you know, if you go into the rural areas there, you see a lot of women workforce and who are now enlightened, who understand that they can borrow uh, for their financial needs. And, you know, women are, I am think by far, very good at managing their household finance. If they can manage that, then why can't they manage their business finance? So they are coming into the coverage now, is what we are seeing. There are banks who are coming out with special, special schemes for women borrowers. You know, it could be subsidized interest rates, or uh, it could be loans specifically designed for women borrowers. So a lot of schemes are coming. And we are also, you know, at Godrej Capital, we encourage, I mean, uh, as far as, you know, we have, in fact, we not only encourage women borrowers, we've gone a step further. Uh, we are also open to, 
you know, single sex, uh, uh, same sex partners coming and taking uh, home loans. So for us, diversity is not only women, it's diversity is all across gender. So I am seeing for women specifically, the numbers are growing. I, I think uh, I think this is a huge, perhaps uh, untapped, but a real big opportunity of saying that as the financial services space, how we can think of women as consumers. And uh, Shani, to your point, I've, I've begun to hear this theme of uh, the woman being the CFO of the house. And, you know, the question is the great financial planner of the house. So effectively, uh, do you know, why, why can't she be a consumer of, you know, products, right? Uh, and and can, can we actually lead through it? And our experience in rural has definitely been that, Shalini, that we've seen a lot of, um, you know, women in microfinance, but also a lot of small micro entrepreneurs where women want to participate. Uh, they are becoming more technology savvy. When you think of smartphone penetration, you have as many women using smartphones as men, especially the young women. And I think they're they're as keen, if not more, uh, to participate in 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 you know creating income growth for themselves and their families. So effectively, I think there is a there is a huge opportunity. I think that's really the opportunity for us in the financial services space to think about you know women as consumers and how we can how we can build for them and therefore think of inclusion, not just from a workforce point of view, but also from a consumer uh, based point of view. And that's the great opportunity I, I'm sure all of you are also seeing in your in your respective companies. So maybe let me just uh, close by, uh, uh, you know, asking each of you because, uh, you know, being a little selfish, uh, you know, as Spice Money, we have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, women micro entrepreneurs in our ecosystem, you know, and one of our themes at Spice Money is how to, how to encourage more and more women to not only just become merchants using our platform to create income for themselves, but also working with banks and financial institutions to create products for women in rural areas when it comes to financial products. So uh, I, don't, I don't want to put you on the spot and I know Shanli, you spoke about this a bit, uh, but really, is there an opportunity that you could think about where in your company with what you do, you know, could a, could a woman micro entrepreneur, uh, you know, in a semi-urban and rural India be a potential target consumer for you, right? And is that something that comes on your radar? I know, Shalini, you spoke about, you know, at Godrich Capital, you do consider it. But directionally, do you see semi-urban and rural India as a market, uh, you know, presenting an opportunity for you and the company and, and, and where you operate? So, Aditi, maybe I start with you, right? Sure, sure, Dilip, Absolutely. Uh, no, definitely 100%. I think um, uh, semi-urban, uh, you know, tier two and beyond, the tier two beyond, right, um, is, is a target for payments, for sure, right? Uh, because we know uh, both from an online and offline payments perspective, especially online payments is a segment which will just grow, right? There is a need more and more to collect payments remotely. Um, so we do think of MSMEs as a target segment going forward. And within that, obviously, the, you know, um, we believe women entrepreneurs are a very essential part of that, right? Um, um, this is from a B2B payments perspective. Now, B2C, which is not what cash free payments is in, but, you know, talking about B2C payments also as a space, if you look at, uh, let's say, UPI as a mode, right? Um, only about 30% of women in the country today use UPI payments, right? According to Google Pay, which is one of the leading um, players in the, in the country, which essentially means that there is an opportunity of the other 70%, right? Um, so building products which um, specifically think of the, you know, the journey for women consumers as well as women entrepreneurs, right? From from a payment acceptance standpoint, it is for the entrepreneurs. From a payment, uh, you know, from, from, from a paying standpoint, it's the consumers. I think there's a lot of opportunity we see and we also look, look forward to partner um, with, you know, folks like Spice Money on how, how can we actually solve the payments problem, right? Because we look at payments as a, you know, 360 degree problem we want to solve. So that's definitely something which is very important, which is where the next leg of growth will be, right? The businesses that need payments already have it is the next leg which will start needing payments where we need to start innovating. Now, I, you know, at Spice Money, we'd love to invite all of you to come and see the work we are doing. And Usha, maybe you could play the host there to you know, come to some of the villages that we are, we are operating with women micro entrepreneurs and to see the excitement. In fact, I can just share with you very briefly. I was in uh, Jaipur. And I was, uh, you know, on a field visit and I visited one of our women lead adhikaris and she runs a small silaiki dukan and uh, she has a 12 year old, uh, so actually a 17 year old kid. She got married at the age of 15 and, uh, you know, uh, she works like he goes to school and then she comes and opens the shop 
and goes back to get him, get him lunch and then comes back and runs the shop. And now she invested in a laptop and she's now a spice money adhikari. And when I met her, I said, what do you aspire to be? And she said, I want to be a CEO of a bank. And I was like so blown away because having that confidence to be able to feel that. And she told me, she said, when I got married, I said, what should I study? And I always wanted to be CEO of a bank. So they said, you have to study economics, you have to study finance. So I've done my BA, I've done my MA and all of that. And we've got her video. And if you're all interested, we'll send you a video. And here's a woman who's, you know, in her early thirties and she's got a young, you know, like literally now college going kid who's, who's ready to go to college and who's done a master's and bachelors having got married. And now she wants to be CEO of a bank, right? So this is small town uh, India, which is truly aspirational. And I feel like there's such inspiring stories out there as much as we see in urban India as well. So, you know, I would really, really like, you know, as an ecosystem, as women leaders, how you can also, you know, join us in inspiring women leaders uh, at the grassroots level in semi-urban and rural India, because that's really where new stories are getting written. Uh, and and it's absolutely fascinating. I know we run out of time, but uh, just closing comments from each of you. I think, uh, you know, International Women's Day, the theme is around women inclusion uh, within the industry. I know each of you have spoken about, you know, how you're seeing it at your at where you're sitting. But it's so encouraging to see that we don't just need laws to drive growth. I think the ecosystem in itself is seeing more to happen. I think more women joining the workforce is very important. I do believe that as we start, as companies start seeing women as consumers, by definition, we'll encourage more women to also join the workforce to be able to tap into this untapped segment, which is a huge opportunity. Just closing comments around the room. Uh, Samia, any closing comments from your side? Right, Dilip, I think uh, this is very important, what you just mentioned, which is seeing women as consumers uh, in their own right and as a segment which can drive uh, growth uh, right across the country. And uh, of course, there are several data points from the industry. Uh, uh, you, we've seen a massive growth in uh, applications for business loans from women and including from rural and uh, even even from uh, deep rural uh, locations, right? We've seen a, a, a doubling of the number of women credit card holders. And because I come from that industry, I mean, uh, and one of the uh, very, very interesting is one of the leading products which women are driving uh, full throttle is travel credit cards because they are getting more independent and they are, uh, you know, uh, willing to give wings uh, to their own desires. Um, it's very interesting to know now that maybe it's it's a small segment of urban uh, women here who try who are taking the travel credit cards and and uh, travel on their own. I mean that's amazing, uh, and and we have so many anecdotes across different industries, right? Whether it's travel, tourism, credit cards, finance, banking, lending. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, you know we we also know there are six hundred million assess credit accessible customers in India, right? Uh, but they are underserved and women are a segment of that. How do we solve the problem there? That is what I'm trying to solve at Rupee Card, for example, right now. Um, is there aspiration? Yes. Is there intention? Yes. And we are seeing that in numbers, that the number of credit inquiries, as Shalini uh, just mentioned, has gone up. Number of applications have gone up. But are we really able to service that? Both from uh, building the right product, which is focused in solving some of these consumer-led needs of women, and also from a lender's perspective, right? How are we enabling these women? So that's that's what I'm doing, for example, here. Uh, one of my favorite topics to talk about, right? We are, uh, uh, so, so we, we are focused on ensuring that we are able to target all segments, including women, with their first credit card and get them into the formal credit uh, fold in the formal credit market, help them build their scores and apply for uh, all of these loans and lending products that they need to uh, fulfill their dreams. So I think um, if we come together as an industry to focus, build and build the whole ecosystem, right? Uh, the lenders and the consumers and the tech, um, the regulators, all of us have to come together and enable all of these things together. And there's a lot of exciting stuff happening. I think if you all uh, continue to focus on that, we'll see these numbers grow even faster. Wow, I can just feel the energy. And I know that there's so much potential out there for all of us, uh, you know, um, any closing comments from your side, Aditi, as, as we wrap up the call? 
Sure, absolutely. I think uh, talking about inclusion, I think it's uh, every woman leader has to uh, realize that she is a role model. So it's important to really be more accessible, more visible. Um, uh, you know, uh, ensure that a lot more women get inspired. So each of us should really realize that in in our own ways, we are role models for young girls, right, who are looking up uh, to all of us. And I think that's something that if we internalize, I think that itself will lead to the next uh, set of people getting inspired and not feeling lost and knowing that there are people out there uh, to help them out. So thank you, Aditi. We'll make sure that a lot of young women in rural India watch you and listen to you and get inspired by you. Uh, uh, before I come to you, Shalini, Natasha, any closing comments from your side? I think, uh, personally, I have not really been through the gender bias anywhere, but uh, of course, women inclusion is important. Designing products and making them the consumer for it would be one of them. But I also strongly believe that it is necessary to start training and the education out quite young. Uh, so the more you go to colleges and schools and you talk about uh, the journeys that various women have had or talk about ideas, talk about how those ideas can be supported uh, by various companies, various uh, you know forums, that is when people will start looking at gender inclusion as an important thing. And probably we'll have many more women in the workforce as well as uh, many more women participants when, when, whenever we enter various forums as well. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Shalini, closing comments from your side, ma'am? Yeah, so I think I completely agree with Soumya and uh, Aditi, you know, saying that as women leaders, we have to take the initiative. So as I said, there are very few women in the leadership roles. So whoever are there, I think, uh, you know, that's what we are driving uh, even in our organization. I'm sure everybody's driving in the respective organizations, build diverse team, create open forums, create, you know, mentoring, uh, you know, framework where you can mentor, you know, the, the other women leaders can also mentor, uh, sponsor some of the programs, uh, which can lead to more women participation, more gender participation, challenge biases, uh, keep on reviewing policies, have those kind of groups in every organization, which talk about what are the situations which, which you know, women are grappling with, which kind of um, uh, uh, you know, not allow them to grow or wherever there are obstacles which they are facing, can you modify some of those policies? So I think there's a lot of communication which is already happening. And uh, as women leaders, I think the onus is on all of us to ensure that these conversations continue and we keep on revisiting and enforcing these. And um, I think this is a great beginning already. I mean, the kind of, uh, the fact that all of us are discussing this in itself uh, says that, you know, everybody is conscious about it and conscious steps are being taken by all of us. So I'm, I am and I really believe that the numbers are going to just go up. Uh, diversity numbers are going to go up and the organizations will be very, very healthy in terms of, you know, uh, it also encourages, you know, everybody to participate and, and whatever decision making is done at leadership, if you have a great leadership, which is diversified, you know, some of the decisions which come out are also, uh, very, very good. And they are all favorable, uh, both to employees and also to stakeholders. So I think things are looking very bright. Wonderful. So thank you so much, Shalini. And Usha, if I could close with you, any closing comments from your side? Yeah, sure, Dilip. Um, I think it's been a wonderful panel discussion. And uh, if we look at, you know, traditionally, uh, it's been, um, uh, you know, a bit skewed in terms of uh, gender equations and things, of course, from what we hear from all our, you know, lovely panelists here, things are changing. And um, in that sense, you know, I would really like to uh, call out that, um, you know, some of these women nanopreneurs that uh, we are helping in the rural areas, um, and the, actually the cause and the agent for change is financial empowerment. So if you look at financial empowerment of women, probably, uh, you know, that is uh, what causes the tilt and uh, the change in not only, you know, how they view themselves, but how everyone around them views, uh, you know, these women. So I think, um, you know, as women leaders, it's very important we lead by uh, example and uh, you know to be seen as a woman of substance to be seen as a role model we need to demonstrate a lot of it in our actions 
for me i think um, it is uh, these small stories in the rural hinterland where people uh, you know where women are uh, getting more and more empowered i think uh, these women inspire inclusion and diversity in the real sense and i i really look up to stories of um, you know women who are um, against all biases and against all odds they are you know kind of uh, um, you know making a mark and i think uh, i would sum it up saying that all of us you know irrespective of gender i think uh, we must create a world uh, defined by rabindran tagore uh, where uh, you know women can uh, live in a world where the mind is without fear and the head is held high i think that's how i would sum up uh, you know our interactions Thank you thank you so much usha well i'm walking away very very inspired as i'm sure many others who watch this panel discussion thank you so much ladies for your time and uh, you know it's been wonderful moderating this panel thank you aditi thank you usha thank you shalini thank you natasha thank you somia i i think the theme for this international women's day inspire inclusion is something that all of you uh, do every day at your workplace your true women leaders and i'm sure as your story gets told to many others it will inspire many more young women to not only join the workforce but go and lead many workforces not in india but around the world thank you once again for your time and i wish you all the best in your journeys ahead and happy women's day thank you so much